welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Jack McLaughlin, who's, I believe, 15 hours ahead of me in Brisbane, Australia. Yeah. Uh, uh, I say that's better. <laughs> yeah. He's, it's, it's 9 p.m. where I am, and I think it's noon where <laughs> you are. <laughs> Yeah, come up to talk to that. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So, tell me about how how the coronavirus, you know, pandemic has has played out in your half of the world. Um. Yeah, it's been. It's funny. It's been similar, but it's like delayed. Uh, mm. So I was actually talking to one of my Dutch friends who came and trained okay. with me a couple of years ago for a couple of months, and he and I were talking. And he sent me a message um, before all of this started, like really getting bad here. It, it was about two weeks before. And he said, I can't train. Um, all of our pools have been shut down. Like we just went to go train in isolation. And then we got told to come back because now we, everyone else is going in isolation. Um, mm-hmm. It's like pretty hectic over here. And I was thinking at, at the time, I was like, oh, well, you know, like we're training. Everything else is pretty normal. Um, this yeah. is pretty hectic. Like, I feel so bad for you guys. I can't believe that's happening, especially with the Olympics and everything. I was like, this is wild. Um, and I couldn't believe it. And then, and then he messaged and said, yeah, it seems like Australia is like two weeks behind everyone else. So, you know, like this might happen to you as well. And at the time I was thinking, oh, no, nah, we should be right. Like we're pretty isolated over <laughs> this big island over here. Right. <laughs> and then, yeah, two weeks later, literally same thing. Um, it was a Monday so Sunday afternoon, our prime minister of Australia, he kind of put some laws down um, for different aspects of what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and the week, the week before, um, so this all happened about a week and a half for us. I was actually meant to be flying to Flagstaff, Arizona, to do an altitude camp. And probably the day before, um, we decided, it wasn't even like it was banned or anything. We just decided for our own safety, it's probably best not to go with everything that's happening. Everything's changing so fast. Um, mm-hmm. So we decided not to go on our, on our own. Um, and then two days later, we, um, there was a travel ban. Um, yeah. And then we decided that we'd go down south to Australia where there's a bit of altitude train down here. Not as good as flag stuff, but it's okay. Um, and mm-hmm. so we decided to do that instead the next week. Um, two days on from that, um, we got a domestic travel ban, so we couldn't even travel anywhere in oh, Australia. Okay. Um, so we went from, you know, going to Flagstaff one day to about five days later being restricted in our own home. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that Monday that came up, um, we were training Monday morning. Semi Australia had actually booked the entire pool complex during our hours um, for us to train, for my squad to train alone, um, okay. which was fantastic. Like it was huge thing for swimming Australia to do and we're really thankful for them. Um, and so at that time we figured, you know, we'll be fine. If everything gets shut down, we'll still have our hours that we can train um, at Chandler. And during that session, my coach was on the phone the entire session, pretty much just trying to organize stuff. Um, and then when we got out, we had to have a meeting and Chandler pretty much said that, sorry, like we can't even keep it open for you guys. Everything is shutting now. Um, and then I text, I think who did I text? I text like Mitch Larkin, Matt Corden. Um, and I said like, what's happening with you guys? Like, are you guys able to train? And they were like, no, nah, we just got the call as well. We can't train either. Um, so within about a couple of hours, all of our programs got shut down. Um, and then Swimming Australia had to kick in and then shut down any other programs that were still running um, mm-hmm. purely for the sake of safety of the athletes. Um, they didn't want people trying to push and do stupid stuff um, and get sick or, you know, get this corona, um, COVID-19. So, yeah. yeah, it all happened really fast. Um, and then, yeah, within that day, um, we went from training in the morning to in the afternoon, we we're pushing for the Olympics to be uh, postponed. So, yeah. yeah, it was very quick. Um, w- did you have an initial reaction to when? Because I know before they had officially postponed it, Australia was one of the countries that said, like, we're not sending athletes if they have it in 2020. Uh, yeah, so the AOC, so the Australian Olympic Committee, they, I think on that Monday morning as well, they had announced that they won't be sending a team. Um, well, so the Prime Minister said that no no one is able to travel internationally. And then at the press conference, one interviewer asked, what does that mean for Olympic athletes? And he said, no exceptions. So it wasn't really like a yes or no, but it was more okay. of a read between the lines kind of thing. Yep. Um, and 
And then the AST came out that morning to say, yeah, we won't be sending a team um, because of these travel restrictions placed on Australia. Um, mm. And then at that point, I was like to my coach, well, what's happening? Like, are we a- like, even if we are able to train, are we able to go? Like, even if it's on? Um, so there's all this confusion of, you know, even if we can train, even if the Olympics are on, is Australia still going? Who knows? Like, um, and that's when there's assuming Australia was talking to AOC, AOC were talking to the government about all these res- like just restrictions and what was, it was just such a confusing time, confusing day of yeah. no one really knew what was actually happening. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so <laughs> what was, what was your first reaction then when the, the IOC finally came out and was like, Hey, no Olympics or like, you know, they're postponed. Mm. Um, relief at the time because at the time they came out to say it's postponed uh, yeah. we were already cancelled all of our trainings and everything um, so it's kind of relief that like okay well at least it's getting postponed at least you know um, I have a shot at going um, so you know the first was relief I think at the start when all of this was happening it was kind of like devastating for me just because you know I've put in such hard, hard work for the past couple of months the year really um, yeah. to work for August, so July, August, um, and you know, I think this with all swimmers around the world, you, you always try and plan your run to be peaking at that point, and like to be pushed back a year. Like, yes, you'll be out of train for a longer time. I mean, everything, but it is still difficult to try and wrap your head around being able to refocus your goals and going back to be like, all right, well, I got to train like this for another twelve months now. Um, so it, it it is pretty difficult. Um, and yeah, at the time, I said relief for the IOC when they postponed it because I was like, thank God, like. And as well, you know, you don't want to, you'll never want to win an Olympic gold medal um, and know that your competition wasn't at their best. I think that's the biggest thing for me was if, you know, if you did really well, there'd always be kind of an asterisk and be like, well, you know, these countries weren't allowed to train for um, two months prior. So did you really win? Um, <laughs> right. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, right. And I think it, it's, it's been nice to hear a lot of athletes perspectives and, and just hear it's like, this is devastating, but obviously it's the right call for health, you know, for, for everyone's like health and safety. And, and I think you're right. You know, if they had had an Olympics, which if if that was even like a minor possibility, there would have been like a huge asterisk that had come. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, Um, definitely. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, just definitely with that. And just saying that like, you know, you, with, if the Olympics were still on at that time, you know, you were seeing people, with who countries who actually had isolation issues, especially like Italy and stuff, yeah. um, you know, those athletes would probably be trying to break the law pretty much to go train. Um, Cause that's how dedicated swimmers are. Um, and you just don't want that situation to be put on swimmers. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Agreed. So, so how has your, you know, what is your day to day like now? Um, and <laughs> like, how has that changed? <laughs> um, it's good. Yeah, it's changed quite a lot. I'm trying to, you know, catch up on a lot of uni work that I've kind of missed over the past couple of weeks with all this happening. Um, yeah. So that's going on pretty regularly. And then other than that, trying to stay active and fit with whatever I can really do. Um, so we've, we've still got quite a lot of um, isolation guidelines for us and protocols. So at the moment, I'm trying to, you know, go for a bit, a few runs um, just to active stuff um, i've been trying to surf a little bit more um try to keep you know the arms sticking over in the water i think that's probably the best thing but i live about an hour and away from the beach so that's pretty tough but other than that um like home workouts uh so medicine ball stuff um i just bought myself like a one of those chin-up bars that go in the doorway just try to keep my um strength up in there um Same. yeah <laughs> i think <laughs> oh when i was looking online everything was sold out like i couldn't find oh. one anyway i was like god oh. I just want one. Um, yeah, we had to dig pretty deep to find ours too. Like it took like, the, oh, really? yeah, we went to like one store completely, like no options, like everything sold out. Yeah. Then the other store, because we got on the bandwagon like after everyone was already isolated. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I think at the moment, going for runs, um, cycling on like a bike, mm-hmm. um, surfing, just try running, just I want to say active with that kind of stuff, I think is my kind of thing I'm trying to 
aim towards at the moment. You know, like the Olympics is going to be 15 months away now. So you have time to take a bit of a mental break now. Um, and like, I can't even swim at the moment. So um, it's not like, you know, I'm having a break by choice. It's kind of forced. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, yesterday I, I swam in a backyard pool with one of the cords, um, mm-hmm. just tied up to a wall. Um, like you've probably been seeing on Instagram, everyone's doing it. Um, just kind of keep my strength up in the water. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I think the most important thing is just trying to stay like a healthy, active lifestyle for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Like how has this, like mentally, you know, you're, you're, I'm sure you're used to putting in some serious K's um in the pool it's like is it weird to have that much free time (laughs) oh oh, yeah extremely like i i always think oh i gotta do this today i gotta do that today otherwise i won't have time to do it and i get to like midday i'm about oh i've still got you know so many hours in a day normally at midday i'm like well i got about two hours before i got to train so i gotta get this done quickly um so (laughs) Yeah, it's 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 good and bad because it's like good that I have the time, but it's bad because I'm kind of becoming a bit um, complacent with things. Like just like, oh, I'll do it later. I got the time. <laughs> yeah. What what are some of the? I mean, have you? What are some things that you've done that you? It's like, oh, I feel good about like finally getting this done. You know, I know I've talked to people about. Oh, my house is really clean now. Oh. Uh, Trying to think, I I don't think I've really done that much, like really successful, not successful, but just big things. Um, yeah. Have Have you picked up any new hobbies aside from like staying oh, active? Yeah, I've been trying to learn the Rubik's cube for some odd reason. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was at my girlfriend's place last week, and um, she had them, and I was like, I'm going to try to solve this, and it took me a while. But I finally got there, so I'm trying to learn how to do it properly and quickly now. So yeah, I it's one of those things I've always wanted to do, but I'm just like, oh, it's a bit of time consuming to try and actually learn how to do. Uh, right, it's probably one of the things that I've kind of picked up. I've, I've I've been trying to pick up a few like different things as well. Um, like one of my goals was during this time was like, oh, I really wanted to get better at surfing because I mm-hmm. never get to go because of swimming. Right, but then. At the moment, our beaches are still open, but I think they might be getting closed really soon. So I'm like, no. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I, like, I know a lot of our beaches have been closed or are getting closed. And so I was like, oh, nice. Australia, like you beaches are still open, but yeah, apparently not. No, I know in New South Wales, they're closed. Victoria, they're closed. I think Queensland are pretty soon to close, but. Gotcha. I'm hoping they stay open. We're pretty lucky that we have so many beaches. So that's what I've kind of banking on, but you know, who knows? Yeah. All right. So are you able, like, do you have roommates? Are you able to see anyone fairly regularly at all or keep in contact yeah, so, with your teammates? Um, so I still live with my family. Um, so, which is nice at the moment. Um, I was, you know, planning, yeah. planning on doing that till up to the Olympics and then moving out. Um, so yeah who knows what's going to happen now but um so that's nice having people around though um which is always really good um Mm -hmm. and then yeah my teammates we just had you know have a group chat that we talk and see how everyone's going it's um a bit of a funny group chat at the moment because all it is is complaining about how much running sucks and how much all (laughs) these other exercises suck like you (laughs) just want to swim again (laughs) and i've never thought we'd be saying i just want to (laughs) swim right i yeah i've I've had an, a, a running joke with people I've talked to and that's just like, if every, if, if any, no, no swimmer can run. And if any swimmer says they're running, <laughs> they're, they're a liar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's very odd. Do you, do you feel like you've picked up anything that you've enjoyed outside of the pool? Um, yeah, I kind of like, I d- I've always liked cross training. Um, I've, mm-hmm. I've found that cross training is something that I really like. I'm quite of a sporty person in general. Um, you know, okay. I grew up playing rugby union um, as well as mm-hmm. swimming. Um, and, and then I like, you know, when I was young, I did like pretty much every sport. You could do tennis, um, cricket, uh, volleyball. Like I did everything and I just wanted to give everything a go. Oh, nice. um, so I've always really enjoyed cross training whenever we get to do it. Um, so that's something that I actually have. I've been really enjoying is that like 
I can go, you know, and do something else. And that's part of my training at the moment, which is really good for me. Um, it's really helping my mindset at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think those things I've really enjoyed because I just really love like the idea of doing something else, um, to, to, you know, help my swimming. Um, and there's a lot of th- things you can do to really help you swimming, like boxing and everything. And for me as well, um, I think those like running and cycling is good for the leg fitness, which um, I like to train as well. So I think those things are a, a plus to what's happening at the moment. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I have to, so here when this whole thing kind of started, everyone was freaking out and bu- and going to grocery stores and buying out all of the toilet paper. <laughs> Did you guys experience a similar yeah. phenomenon? <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. I don't know what's happening. Like it just happened, and then I think like I want to know who was the first person to do this <laughs> because whoever did it first started all of this. Like if everyone was just sensible, like everyone can still go grocery shopping. It's not like it's a world shortage of toilet paper. Like it's right. It's just because there's been someone who's gone out buy like all the things. <laughs> all the toilet paper and people saw that and be like, Oh God, I got to do that now. And so it was about like a exponential growth of people doing it. And then now there's none. I just, I think it has gotten a lot better in Australia. I haven't heard as many people complaining about it, but yeah, uh-huh. it's not fun. I, yeah, I was trying to solve it with someone else and we couldn't, we couldn't crack the code of like, what happened here? Like toilet papers, like what, like I kind of get like food. Cause I, at first, when this started, like I had the initial thought of like, "Oh God, like are we gonna run out of food?" And then, and then, like you know, my sense mm. kicked in, and I was like, "No, we're not. Like, it, it's fine." Yeah. But like toilet paper, yeah. I'm not like I don't immediately go for like, "Oh God, I need toilet paper." Um, no. So that There's was a... weird. Yeah, like I, I understand canned foods or something like you know people stockpile on canned foods yeah. yeah i understand that you don't want to go out the house like fair enough but like toilet paper you're just like <laughs> come on like it's not that um so yeah that was that was a whole unique thing um and then it was a funny a comedian in australia actually made a funny video about um he he was a made like a facebook video about mm-hmm. going to like like Maccas and the banks and stuff and trying to pay with things with toilet paper because they're so rare at the moment. <laughs> it's actually a really funny video. Like I, I don't really rate the comedian that well. I think he's um, not that good, but that yeah. was pretty funny. I did laugh at that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like it, it seems like it would become the new currency in our, yeah, in at our the current moment, state. Um, have, has, has going out there been, you know, does does the town you're in seem like a ghost town or are people still kind of moving around doing things on a daily basis? Um, well, it kind of seems like, in my personal opinion, that there seems to be a bit more people out just because no one can do what they normally do in terms of they can't go to the gym, they can't go um, do their activities, you know, inside somewhere. So everyone's kind of like, running or you know going for a walk and stuff to get their physical exercise so it's kind of like in my personal opinion it's kind of seems like it's created a state where there's more people actually on the streets because people are trying to stay healthy and fit um and because everything else is closed they can't go so yeah Yeah, i i agree at least where i am in you know the middle of texas like it seems like that has been the same where Mm there's like noticeably less cars on the road still kind of a good amount but you know there's cars on the road yeah. and but then there's like tons of people just like walking and and social mm. you know social distancing yeah like yeah walking or yeah. biking or running and uh yeah kind of an interesting phenomena for sure yeah that's what i found as well like there's lots of still people going, going to work and driving um all like around the place but yeah, like especially the parks and stuff um, are pretty busy. But then I'm pretty sure yesterday the parks where I am have just got closed. So gotcha. we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, any any closing thoughts you've got or any thoughts on just kind of moving forward through this? 
Um, yeah, I think like just personally, it's just about taking a bit of a mental break at the moment and just trying to focus on staying healthy, active lifestyle, like I was talking about before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in general, like, I don't know. I think the biggest thing right now is the unknown of how long this is going to last um, yeah. and how long these pools will be shut down because at the moment it's all well and good. Everyone, you know, it's been what a week and a half or something since it happened. So it's uh, everyone's just kind of on a bit of a break, keeping mentally up and physically active. But, you know, if this goes on longer than four weeks, there might be a bit of a major issue going on because you don't really want to be having longer than a month out, like a year before the Olympics. It's um, something that, especially for like distance swimmers and stuff, it'll be pretty hard to come back. Um, yeah and get that peak fitness back so yeah i don't really know what's going to happen um but you know my coach is always saying um the best the best athletes and you know the ones who win the the olympic gold medals are the ones who are able to adapt the best so you know we'll see what happens and hopefully um we you know kind of manage it properly yeah well awesome thank you so much for your time jack yeah that's all right thank you for having me